wasting time with tennis practice. Now let me ask you something. Do you like to win? Of course. Now let me ask you something else. Do you like to practice? Probably not as much, right? Well, what if I told you that you could actually practice less and get even better results? Would you believe me? Well, it's true. Now, let's get one thing straight right away. Yes, practice is one of the most, if not the most important aspect of your game. I mean, heck, it's one of the main catalysts for your ability to improve and get better. But that said, don't get confused. I mean, sure, you want to work and practice hard rather than be lazy in the time used to prepare for match day, but you don't have to be out there from sun up to sun down just to see progress. It's all about maximizing. Let me tell you, quality always beats quantity, especially in this case. Now, I know you've probably heard this over 10,000 times since you were writing an essay for your fifth grade English class because you were trying to reach that required page length, but it's 100% true for your tennis practice sessions. The sad truth, though, is that there are tons of players out there who don't know this. They're out there putting in tons of time, but still don't see results. Why is that? One of the main reasons why players aren't seeing the fruits of their labor and often permanently putting down their rackets is because their central approach to the actual practice itself is very flawed. How so? Because players are starting blank. Okay, they're practicing cold. And no, they're not conducting drills in the Siberian Arctic. What I mean is, they come to the court without a clue in the world as to what's going to be worked on. Yeah, you know, they just set up the agenda on the fly. Ever done that? Just kind of living out the moment out there on the court and doing sort of, you know, whatever comes to mind? Sound familiar? If it does, let me tell you something. That kind of approach and thinking is great for a vacation or a weekend sail on the Pacific, but it will absolutely kill, slaughter, and massacre any hopes you have of maximizing your practice. If your practice has no structure, you're wasting a ton of time. Time that you could actually be using to learn and further grooving your strokes. But instead, you're out there mentally lost and greatly slowing down your rate of progress. See, you don't have time to just sit there thinking about what you're going to do, bouncing ideas off your hitting buddy until you both can agree on what should come next. It's kind of like if you're in the gym working out and you're just randomly walking, you know, bobbing your head from machine to machine with no real purpose. You don't know if you should work on your biceps, uh, triceps, back, chest, abs, or shoulders. And as a result, you slow yourself down big time. Sorry, I got that from my favorite movie. And the worst part about it is, you'll be out there from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. when you could have easily done it in 50% of the time. Say, 5 p.m. to 6.30 Sound better? Of course it does. Now, I'm glad I mentioned this, because this is the same reason why you see some tennis players practicing for seven and eight hours and still not seeing those results they want. They're wandering out there from drill to drill and from concept to concept. They have no direction. So, to get better results with less time and effort, you need to have a what? Exactly. Pre-practice agenda. All right? Follow these four steps and you'll see results in no time. Number one, use your past to shape your future. What I mean by this is to analyze what you did poorly and also what you did well in your last session 
because that will help you decide what needs the most immediate attention in your present one. Always start with your mistakes first. All right. Always, always, always begin working on your weaknesses before anything else. That's going to help you increase your game the quickest. Now note this. You don't want to use an analysis that you did months ago as your base either. Why? Because a lot could have changed in your game since then. Out with the old, in with the current. Number two, narrow your sights. Once you've diagnosed your most glaring weaknesses and the things you did well, sit down with your coach or your hitting partner and develop a plan of attack as to what parts of your game and what types of shots as well as drills you should work on in your next session. Now granted, you can't possibly give the necessary attention to every facet of your game in a couple of hours. That's an unrealistic task. So that said, you need to isolate them. For example, your backhand slice shot, speeding up your afterstroke recovery, or your forehand down the line would be some really good choices. Now note, as for the drills, if they're new, make sure all who will be involved fully know the goal of each one and how they work. It's not good enough for one of you guys to know what's going on, and the other one is learning as you go along. All right, that's going to slow things down. By doing this, this will narrow things down quite a bit and give you a feasible goal for that day. And you can really hit the ground running, so to speak. After you stretch, of course. Number three, time it. Once you've got your plan of attack down, designate a specific amount of time that you'd like to spend on each element. Now this is critical. You see, because a lot of times when we get into a drill and we're really in a groove, we can tend to forget that there are other things afterwards that need to be initialized as well. And those things tend to be shortchanged as a result. But by keeping time with a stopwatch, for example, you'll be able to get to everything that you had planned to. Okay, and no part of your game will suffer. Because hey, if you fall behind in that practice, you're going to be playing catch up for the entire week. Oh, we didn't get to this, so we have to change what we're going to do for Tuesday. Oh, we didn't get to that, so we're going to have to change what we do for Wednesday. And then it goes on and on and on. And you have to do a lot of juggling. But by sticking to the plan and going with the correct schedule, you'll be a lot more focused throughout. And you'll really be able to give it your best shot from start to finish. Number four, review and repeat. Talk about and review the progress you made immediately after. And then repeat the process before your next practice. Now this is key. You want to do it immediately after. Okay, because the more time that passes by after your practice, the more things start to slip your mind and fall to the back seat, so to speak. Okay, just like in class, I say if you're going to take notes, you want to immediately review those notes. Maybe not go over every word, but glance over them a second time as soon as you get home. That way it sticks in, it sinks in deeper, and you remember it a lot better. Okay, same thing here. As soon as your practice is done, you pick up all the balls, you sit down with your coach on the bench or inside the, uh, the club, and grade yourself on what you did. That's going to help a lot. Because remember, like we said in the beginning, you always want to maximize. Right. Warning! Don't think you can store all of this information in your head. Now, no, it has nothing to do with intelligence. I know that you're an incredibly bright and intelligent player. Things come up. With everything that goes on in everyday life, you can, and most likely, will get distracted. And your whole pre-practice itinerary can be lost, rearranged, or even completely forgotten about in less than five seconds. You don't want to get to the court and say, what were we going to work on again? That takes you back to square one. And you just wasted all that great work you did 
to set this up beforehand. When you talk about it, it's a thought. But when you schedule it and write it down, it's concrete and it's real. Now no, don't put it on your napkin you save from lunch or a scratch piece of paper you have lying around the house. If you're serious about getting better, drop by your local drugstore, mine is the 99 cents only store, get a lot of stuff there, and pick up a durable binder that you can store them in. It's only a buck. Yes, along with some lined paper, probably another buck. Okay, so two bucks will get you your binder and all the paper you need, probably like 50 to 100 sheets. I mean, hey, your game is worth two bucks, right? Of course. This way, you can keep everything organized and you can make sure that your sessions are balanced and you're not overloading too much in one area and unknowingly ignoring another. So, no, you don't have to spend 24 hours a day on the court to get results. It's about being smart and preparing yourself. Having this type of simple schedule ahead of time will maximize your efforts, allow you to enjoy other things you like to do like going to the beach, playing video games, spending time with the family, or catching a light movie, and still allow you to kick your opponent's butt the next time out. As always guys, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed this tip. Let me know what you think by adding your thoughts down below, and have a great week and an even better game. I'll see you soon.